Okay, let's talk about kinematics. Kinematics is a branch of classical mechanics that describes the motion of objects without referring to forces. We'll talk about forces in subsequent videos. Here, we're going to start by talking about kinematics, specifically with one-dimensional motion. Again, in subsequent videos, we'll look at kinematics with two-dimensional motion. The first thing we want to understand with kinematics is that if we want to quantify motion, we need a coordinate system. And we can see this best if we take a look at our first vector quantity of kinematics, which is displacement. Displacement we can define as the change in position of an object. And we often express this as this equation right here, where displacement is denoted as delta x, change in position, and it's equal to the final position minus the initial position. You can see right below, we have a coordinate system where we have an origin in the middle and the positive direction is on the right, the negative direction is on the left. When you have a coordinate system, you're able to assign the position at the beginning of the motion and at the end of the motion. So we can say in this case that our object has an initial position of negative one meters and it also has a final position of two meters. So essentially our object moved from this initial position to that final position. When you have both initial and final positions on a coordinate system, you can calculate the displacement. So using the equation delta x is equal to xf minus xi, our final position is two meters, our initial position is negative one meters, which if you evaluate that value, you will get positive three meters. This means that our object moved a distance of three meters in the positive direction. Okay, so that's how displacement works. Let's take a look at another vector quantity, average velocity. Average velocity is defined as the change in position over a particular time interval. And we have it in equation form where we have V with a horizontal line on the top to denote that we're referring to average velocity. And this is equal to the displacement, the change in position over the time interval over which the motion occurred. Notably from MCAT, you need to know not only about average velocity, but you also need to know instantaneous velocity. You're gonna see that the equation is very similar. It's also change in position over time. But the main difference is that instantaneous velocity is using a very, very short time interval. So that essentially tells you the main difference between average velocity and instantaneous velocity is that average velocity is generally looking at long time intervals, generally looking at the entire motion of the object. What was its displacement over the total time that it took for the motion to occur? Instantaneous velocity is not looking at the entire motion. It's just asking at this very instant in time, how fast is my object moving? We can see best the differences between these two terms by taking a look at an example here. So here the situation is Bob has just finished work and he's driving home. And to represent the travel, we have a position time graph where we have x, the position in the y-axis, and t, the time in the x-axis. So as you can see in this graph, in the first 20 minutes, Bob traveled 3,000 meters, which is pretty slow because he basically hit peak traffic on his way home from work. So after 20 minutes, he decides he's sick of the traffic, so he's going to go grab a quick dinner. So he stops by a quick place to grab a bite of food for 20 minutes. So while he's eating, his position isn't changing. Then once he finishes the snack, he decides, okay, I'm going to drive home now. And now that traffic has cleared up a bit, he's able to travel the remaining distance back home in another 20 minutes. Okay. So with this situation, that's now considered the average velocity. So average velocity, we know the equation is equal to V with a horizontal line on the top is equal to the change in position over the change in time. The change in position is looking at your final position, which when he got home, it's 12,000 meters. 
minus his initial position, which was at the start when he was at work, which is zero meters, divided by the time it took for that process to occur, which was the final time was 60 minutes, the initial time was zero minutes. So essentially, we end up with this value of 12,000 over 60. So the zeros essentially don't affect our equation. So we simplify this, we can get a value of 200 meters per minute as his average velocity. So it's saying overall, if you considered the entire 60 minutes, he was essentially moving 200 meters per minute. So now let's consider instantaneous velocity. So instantaneous velocity, we're not considering the entire motion. We're just asking at any instant in time, how fast is he moving? So let's say in this case, we want to consider the instantaneous velocity at this point right here. Instantaneous velocity. One nice aspect of the instantaneous velocity is that since you're looking at the change in position over time where the time interval was very, very small, the instantaneous velocity actually ends up being the slope of the position time graph. So here, we could calculate very small values to calculate what is the slope at that very instant in time. But here we can see since it's a linear line, the slope is the same at all points along the curve. So if we want to calculate the instantaneous velocity, we can just take the slope of this region of the line. So we can see that the change in position was from 3000 meters to 12,000. So you would say final position is 12,000 meters minus your initial position, which was 3,000 meters to get the slope of this line, divided by your time, which your final time is 60 minutes, and your initial time is 40 minutes. So if you calculate this value, you're gonna get 9,000 meters over 20 minutes. And if you simplify this value, you're going to end up with 450 meters per minute. So you can see here that the instantaneous velocity is at this point is much larger than the average velocity. And that makes sense because we know that Bob was not traveling this fast throughout his entire trip. There were parts where he wasn't moving and other points where he was moving slowly because of the traffic. So again, the instantaneous velocity is just asking at any instant in time, how fast am I traveling? Whereas the average velocity is looking at the entire travel as a whole. Okay, so hopefully that clarifies average velocity and instantaneous velocity, but let's go ahead and take a look at another example. So in this case, we're gonna have a situation where a person runs a 400 meter lap in 80 seconds. So we can go ahead and draw this out. So, you know, we've got a lap and we've got our person who is starting at the beginning of the lap and they're going to run this entire lap. So essentially they're gonna run uh, uh, just a lap around this track. So in this case, I want to consider a few things. So the first thing I want to consider is the distance. The distance that this person traveled. Well, in this case, they ran the 400 meter lap, so the distance traveled is 400 meters. Next, I want to consider displacement. Displacement is the change in position, final position minus initial position. In this case, the person started right here, and when they ran the lap, they ended at the same spot. So the initial position, final position is the same, so the displacement is zero meters. So finally, I want us to consider the average velocity. The average velocity is, again, the change in position over time. And since we know the displacement when they run a lap is 
zero, that means that the average velocity must also be equal to zero. Which I know sounds a little odd because it makes it sound like our person wasn't moving at all. But again, this should make sense because of what average velocity is. Average velocity is looking at the entire motion as a whole. And as a whole, the person's position didn't change, so the average velocity is zero. However, if we were to look at the instantaneous velocity, we would see the person would have an instantaneous velocity with a non-zero value at any point along the lap. Okay. So finally, the last thing I want to talk about is acceleration. So acceleration is the change in velocity over a particular time interval. So we have it here in equation form, which makes sense, change in velocity over the change in time. And you can technically do the same thing with acceleration that we did for velocity. Talk about average acceleration and instantaneous acceleration. The MCAT doesn't tend to test the difference between that as much as they do for velocity, but if that ever did show up on the exam, it's the same approach that we just took with average and instantaneous velocity.